folks, this is Lurch here from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm here to give you a quick look at the Advanced Cannon's real guns and show you how to put a basic one together and how to troubleshoot some of your problems whenever you're actually designing one. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer at the start here and say this is still the dev, te dev test branch and there are many changes still incoming. Now, first of all, whenever you're designing a cannon, you want to choose your gauge and see what sort of shells that you want to plug into it. In this case, I've went with two gauges. You can see these massive Sabo shells here and I'll show you just how they work now. So whenever you're designing your shell I've in this case put five gunpowder casings and these increase your shell velocity and I have Sabo warhead bodies and a Sabo head on the top. These are for high AP modifiers and add kinetic damage. Now I can add more gunpowder casings which will increase the shell velocity but this also increases the optimal barrel length for propellant burn. So adding more of these will mean I have to have a crazy long barrel. Yes, it will be more powerful, but uh, you, you have to make a trade-off somewhere. So let us carry on with actually building cannon itself. Um, one thing I will demonstrate here, and you'll see I have something set up for this here, is if you shoot through, you'll see I have a target predictor on, and you can see it going all the way through there. With the new cannon system, they penetrate all the way through, and wow! Okay, that was a lucky shot. Um, I took the AI straight out there. Um, but yeah, the cannons here will let you oops, uh, shoot directly through things, and you see a nice little trail of bullets all the way through. So, let's get on with actually building a cannon. Now, first thing that you have to do and you'll see that I'm using turrets this time, and this is an incredibly important block if you're using turrets, is you have to put down an ammo router. Now, this is like a future proofing mechanism for uh, features that are going to be added, but uh, this will give you a warning message if you don't have it whenever you try to connect your controllers. It is necessary to connect your controllers on a turret uh, to have uh, an ammo router. Without the ammo router, you'll see I can't connect them. It gives you a nice little warning message to tell you. Very simple little block, it's just plug one here and have one on your hull. And one on the hull can connect to any number of ammo routers on turrets. Nice and easy. Now, let's get straight on with actually building the railgun. First block that you're going to need is the railgun magnet attaching fixture. Now this connects on either side, I've got a symmetry line here, of your firing pin. And this is the only place that this can connect and work. So we're going to plunk that on there, and you'll see that the larger end of the block, uh, like the larger flatter end is at the back and the more tapered one is at the front there. Um, they're a little bit fiddly to get connected, but just keep connecting them until they give you the information and it'll say connected to your firing pin. That's literally their only feature. This is uh, only for attaching your magnets to. So let's grab a railgun barrel magnet. Now, these have to be attached to the attachment fixture there, and they go on either side of your barrel. The more magnets that you put down, you will get a higher velocity out of your shells. Um, where will this lap? You'll see on the other cannon here, um, railgun speed increase 229.9 meters per second. So that should be what this one provides as well. And these are all connected up, and whenever you add power to these, they'll start spinning like that other one there. Now, adding more uh, magnets also increases your charge per shot, and we'll get to that whenever we cover magnet or batteries very soon. But every railgun has a maximum charge, and firing reduces that charge, and obviously you have to charge it back up again to fire again, and this drains power from your engines. We're going to move on to the next item, which is a railgun battery, conveniently. So we'll plonk a couple of these down. How many do I have on there? Five? Let's get five of them on here. Now, these, uh, is it showing my charge yet? It is not, because it hasn't got any charge yet. Railgun batteries increase your maximum charge, and then you use that to power the magnets, and this is basically like a, kind of like an ammo thing for your railgun rails. Uh, if you don't have enough charge, then you won't have enough energy to fire your shots, or you will run out of energy very quickly. And that's something I'll cover right at the end whenever we're talking about optimizing your cannons. Um, 
Now these are the only place that you can attach those other Watsamajabos there, the railgun chargers, and I'm just going to move straight on to them. But one thing I do want to mention about these is the only places you can attach these are... Well, are these attached? They are. Uh, they can attach to the firing pin and... Oh, right. Apparently they do charge to these. Connect to these. Ah, no they do not. Yes they do. Okay, apparently they don't just connect to the firing pin. You can connect these to other parts of this thing as well. That's cool. So, they're not that terribly restricted. Next on the list is the cannon railgun charger. Now this is how you get energy from your system, from your engine into the railgun. So we'll plug a couple of these on now and uh, every one of them adds recharge rate. So the more of these you have, the faster your cannon will recharge. Or the faster this charge bar will go up. You see it's starting to rise now, 900, 1000, 1100. And the more of these you add, the faster your railgun will charge up. So that's basically all they do. Uh, but like I said, they can only connect the batteries. You cannot connect these anywhere else on the, the cannon. Now, that, believe it or not, is a working railgun. Now, that cannon worked just fine before as a normal cannon, but now we have a railgun with an extra 200 meters per second. Ah, you'll see here, this is a good example. As your railgun charge depletes, your railgun speed goes down as well. But so does the recoil force, because that's based on your muzzle velocity. So, let's just get a sort of a rough idea how to go about sort of optimizing this gun. Alright, let's look about improving this. First, let's look at our refire rate. You can work this out using the shell customization window here, and it is your reload time from clip divided by the number of autoloaders you have. In this case, we have 9.5 divided by 2, so you've got about 4.25 shots per second. No, sorry, one shot every 4.25 seconds loaded into the chamber. So make sure you have this slider set correctly, otherwise you'll get the wrong result. Now this also applies to normal cannons, and this is how you work out your reload time. Say you have, if I had for example 10 autoloaders, I would be approximately dropping one in every, say, one second here. So it's just your reload time divided by the number of autoloaders you have, and that is your reload rate. Now this doesn't take into account your cooldown rate. My cooldown rate is 7.3 seconds on this, so it's 3 seconds higher than a reload rate. We either need less autoloaders on the cannon to stop sort of wasting as much reload time, or we can reduce our cooldown a little bit more. So we can add a few extra these called cooldown thingies, gauge cooling units. So if we bolt a couple more of these on, you see our cooldown rate should whenever we fire actually shoot. Our cooldown has went down to 5.54 seconds. Now, that's all well and good, but if we fire too fast, we are going to have... we're going to drain our batteries. You see, now that every time I fire, the railgun charge in the middle there is going down a lot faster than the other... Uh, our recharging things can recharge the batteries. So, what we can do here is either cut back the number of magnets we have so that it doesn't use up quite so much charge per shot, or we can bolt another bunch of batteries on and another load of chargers. And this should help to sort of compensate for the difference in refire rate and improve your cannon a little bit. Now, having a bigger battery bank obviously allows you to store a larger charge and fire for longer, but and also, oh sorry, it also lets you connect more more of these chargers overall because they're restricted to only battery faces. Uh, obviously this this also scales your cannon up and it makes it more expensive. So this is where the balancing act starts. Um, if we want to like improve the refire rate, we're going to have to bolt on a whole pile more batteries and another load of chargers. So... Like I say, at this stage, it's a delicate balancing act of getting everything to sort of sit the way that you want it and tweak the different variables, but I'm pretty sure I've covered everything that you need to know to actually do that. So, 
Um, I'm going to wrap the episode up here. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. There's, there's so much customization available in these, I can't even begin to cover a half of it. And there's so much more still to come. So, I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I, I love hearing from you guys. I read every single comment and I do my best to, to reply to them all. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.